Welcome to Serving Locally with me, your host, Michelle Dinas, the podcast where we spotlight service in the Longmont and surrounding communities. All right, let's connect. And welcome to today's episode of Serving Locally. I am here with Cliff from the Humane Society, and I just wanted to say thank you for taking time out and meeting us here and doing this podcast Absolutely. to talk about the Humane Society. So um, just uh, who are you and what is the Humane Society and just a quick little overview. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so like you said, my name is Cliff Cullen and uh, I've been Deputy Director at the Longmont Humane Society um, just a few months now since February. Um, so I'm fairly new in the role, uh, but the Longmont Humane Society um, has been in existence for a long time, since 1972. Um, and we serve um, our local animal population and um, we are um, available for adoptions of animals or surrenders of animals. Um, we have an on-site uh, well pet clinic um, that's our veterinary services. Um, and so we and we're present at a lot of uh, community events around Longmont. So very good. We um, got our last two dogs from mm. the Humane Society, so they they got good 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 puppies there sometimes. Mm. And um, yeah, we like to go there and look at the dogs and mm -hmm. and sometimes the guinea pigs and mm -hmm. stuff that you guys mm -hmm. have yeah yeah we have small mammals and that can be anything from guinea pigs to rabbits we have several rabbits in house right now um we had hairless rats a few years um, a few weeks ago excuse me and um those were very odd i held them and they were very warm um but someone adopted them very quickly so people people love all different kinds of animals <laughs> i had rats growing up mm -hmm. they were cool her mm -hmm. name was wendy mm -hmm. i also had hedgehogs do you guys get many hedgehogs i haven't seen any hedgehogs since i've been there but we might get them i know the only small man mammal that we don't keep is uh, ferrets oh, okay. um, and that's because they're technically predators um, and so they give off like a predator pheromone that makes all the other small mammals and the cats very nervous oh, so we don't interesting keep them. Mm -hmm. I, lo I love doing this because I learned so much. <laughs> it's great. Um, so could you give us a little bit of background about your organization? Yeah. So like I said, we were founded in 1972 when the um, Boulder Humane Society kind of split into two. Um, so we became the Longmont Humane Society branch, and then there's the Boulder Valley branch. Um, we're completely separate organizations, but we're a private organization, um, nonprofit, and we have a contract with the city and um, several surrounding cities, including Frederick, Firestone, Mead, Decano, and Lyons. Oh, I think there's one more that I'm forgetting, and I can't remember what it is, but I'll come back to it. <laughs> um, and um, and so we contract um, with those uh, cities for them to bring in any kind of um, homeless pets, um, and then um, we treat them with medical uh, treatment. Um, we take in any animal, no matter their behavioral um, or medical issues. For age. Um, sorry? Do you guys do based on age well, no 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 limits on age um we take in all of them um so and that's dogs cats and small mammals um longmont does have a reptile humane society um that if we get any reptiles we send them to them if we get any wild animals we send them up to greenwood oh. um and uh, but yeah and so we've uh we've been doing this for a long time um our early years were pretty tough um you know just a lot of underfunding and turnover in staff um sicknesses um we actually started out in a turkey shed on the um the edge of the um boulder county fairgrounds okay and then in the 80s we built a big dome um which people who have been longtime residents of longmont i'm sure will remember and then in 2008 we started a large capital campaign to um expand our building and thanks to a generous donation we um opened the allen center um, which is our current building and it tripled the amount of square feet i believe that oh, we wow. have um it's a huge difference and that's where um, you're at now and that's where it's we're a at beautiful now. building it, it is, really is yeah mm -hmm. so what is your focus at the humane society of longmont yeah so our mission is hold on i wrote this down because i can never memorize it mm -hmm. so our mission is caring serving and educating to improve the lives of companion animals mm. um and so we see 
our mission as um, a community service. Um, so when we bring animals in, um, we're treating members of our community because they, we see the animals as members of our community. And not only that, but we're preparing them to enter the homes of other members of our community. Um, so we see what we do as very community focused. Um, and yeah, so I think that's it. Okay, yeah, you're so good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's, so yes. Yeah, so our dogs our, is people too. Yes. Cats is people too. They, they are part of the family. They mm -hmm. are definitely, they live with us. We yeah. take care of them. Yeah. Um, they're, yeah, they are part of the community, yep. whether you like it or not, <laughs> they, right. they are. And, um, uh, our dogs are family. Mm -hmm. So who are you trying to reach with your organization? So like I mentioned, we're very community focused. Um, so we want to provide a place where people within the community can find companions, um, in the animals. Um, and then, the animals can be treated with dignity, um, with um, having all of their needs met, um, whether that's food, housing, medical treatment. Like I said, we don't turn away any animal for uh, medical needs or behavioral issues. Um, we have a world-class um, behavioral training team. Mm. Um, so they will take any animal, um, no matter what the issue, and train them. Um, and hopefully get them to a point where they're safe to go back into the community. That's always kind of our measuring stick is, um, is this animal a danger to um, other animals? Is this animal a danger to people? And if not, um, then they can be a part of the community. Um, if there's health issues, we do everything from um, dental treatments and um, heartworm treatments, all kind of that normal stuff, spay, neuter, um, and then all the way up to even amputations. Um, if an animal just can't um, function with the, the limbs that they have, um, we have done that and have had animals very successfully come back from that. So um, one of the things we're most proud of is our live release rate is um, 98% oh, from wow. 2022. So 98 of every 100 animals that comes through our doors alive leaves alive. Um, they go, they're adopted, they're returned to their owner if they're stray, um, or they're transferred to another facility that's better um, equipped to handle them. Um, so there's certain facilities that maybe are focused on particular dog breeds or cats or different things that sometimes will have more space or better facilities to treat um, an animal and we'll transfer it to them sometimes as well. What makes the work of the Humane Society different than other similar serving organizations? Um, so I think probably the thing that makes us the most different is just our willingness to take any animal. Um, it's really, that's part of our mission and goal is that every animal is worth putting the effort and energy into. Um, we, in fact, will do a lot of transfers from um, other states. Texas is a big one. Louisiana is another. And I think New Mexico is our mm. other third largest. Um, places that maybe are a little overcrowded and um, societies that might euthanize because of space issues, we never euthanize for space. Mm. Um, so we'll take in a lot of animals from those other communities in order to take uh, really good care of them. Um, and, you know, that's that's just not the mission of other organizations sometimes, um, you know, that's, I don't want to speak negatively of any of the, the local organizations. Um, they all have their missions and the work that they do, but our mission is to bring in every animal that we can. Um, and, you know, we do that also through um, when there are disasters. Um, so when Harvey, um, Hurricane Harvey hit Houston, we brought in a lot of animals mm. from Houston. And so what really helps with that is it creates space in their shelters so that, any animals that get displaced by the hurricane can then go into a shelter and be returned to their owners um, and much more easy, much easier than um, trying to handle all of the strays. They just send all their strays to us and then we can treat them and get them adopted out. Do you guys um, like send them to other facilities then? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, it depends on, you know, how crowded we are. We're pretty crowded on uh, dogs right now. Um, we have a lot. Uh, we're almost full, I think. Mm. Um, although we have an adoption event going on right now that is um, hopefully getting some of those dogs moving. Um, and then cats tend to leave pretty quickly, so we're, we're not too full on them. Um, but uh, we have a whole transfer um, system. Uh, 
other places that we partner with, we'll, we'll bring in animals and we'll send out animals. That's kind of a constantly shifting demographic. Just to find the right the right home for them. Exactly. How many dogs do you guys house? Um, so we can house, I believe it's 350 animals. Wow. Um, it, yeah, it really depends. That's at dogs and cats. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's pretty evenly split, I think, between the two typically as far as space goes. Um, it really depends on the animals that we have. So some dogs do really well staying together. They right. either came in together or they just became friends in a play group. Um, so they stay together and then that doubles up one of our kennel spaces. Um, other dogs, not so much. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have to take one. So, but we can pretty much fit 350 animals pretty comfortably. That's a lot. That's a lot of animals. Yeah. That's a lot of love in that building. Yes. Yeah. And we have um, 3,500 animals who come through our doors um, living um, every year. Um, And then, you know, they're either adopted out, returned to owners, or transferred. Um, We also um, perform euthanasia and cremation services. Um, we have a pet cemetery on site, um, and so that's the other. We have about four thousand animals that come through, mm. um, and so the other five hundred are are those that are are uh, uh, being cremated, um, which again is a service we offer. And anyone and do who that once, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we have to. Um, and, and we got the paw print, and it's yes. on my wall, and yeah, because yeah. he was he was my buddy. Yeah, we do that for all of them, including shelter pets. If it comes to a point where we do have to euthanize a shelter pet because of extreme behavior, or they're just in extreme pain, um, then we will do the paw prints, and you know, it's a whole. The staff really, really cares about all of the animals. Yeah, um, and so it's a whole mourning process that we go through um, anytime that has to happen, um, which again is very rare, but it does happen. So. So what are your greatest needs? So uh, we have many, many needs, um, but uh, cash is always appreciated. Um, <laughs> obviously, you know, donating is is huge. Um, we also have a wish list on both Amazon and Chewy um, where people can go on and purchase things that are either desperately needed or kind of perennial continual needs of ours. Um, right now is kitten season. Um, so if you don't know anything about kitten season when it gets the weather gets consistently above 40 degrees um kittens start being born um and we start getting a lot of them so we have we have a lot we have 450 kittens who come through our our foster program every Mm. year and um we always need kitten supplies because sometimes they need special food you know if they're if their mother has been injured or is not to be found then they have to be bottle fed so we have volunteers who will bottle feed them every two hours 24 (laughs) hours a day um it's it's a challenge um and then they can only be adopted when they are eight weeks and two pounds um and so that they have to be fostered until then because it's really hard to live in the shelter as a kitten there's just too much need that they have um so we have kitten supplies that are on the the amazon and chewy lists um and then volunteers are um, we have 350 active volunteers. Um, last year, that was 20,000 hours of mm. work. Um, it's just we could not do what we do without volunteers. And right now, as it's getting warmer, um, dog walking is huge. Um, we have to walk every single dog in our facility um, two times a day at minimum. Wow. Um, we like to do three. Um, if we can, uh, so that's, we need people. That's, that's really where we need people the most, um, is, uh, is volunteering to dog walk. So tell um, me a little bit more about the dog walking. So, um, you can dog walk if you are 16 or older, um, on your own. If, um, we allow, um, kids of any age, I think to walk with their parents, if their parents have gone through the training and are there with them. Um, and it's, Really just coming in and looking. We have a board that has all of the um, ratings for all the dogs because we rate them. Um, And if you're qualified to handle um, the dog, you can just come in and take it and take them out on a walk. We're right on the edge of the fairgrounds, so it's kind of going around the fairgrounds. 10, 15 minutes just to get them outside, play with them a little bit, um, give them some attention. Um, and they, they love it (laughs) there. It's just, it's the best thing. Um, in fact, it's one of the perks of working there. Um, we're encouraged to take dogs out for walks as well. Um, staff are trained on how to walk them, even if they have an office job like me. Um, and all of our offices actually all have half doors. And if we want to bring a dog up from the shelter to give them a little space and a little, um, 
socialization. Socialization, yeah. totally. Yeah, they um, they were encouraged to do that as that's well. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. I didn't know cool. that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a lot of dogs and a lot of walking. A lot of dogs, a lot of walking. If you're younger than 16, we also have our Jocka program, um, if, which if you don't have a peanut allergy, you can come in and um, put peanut butter, and they call them Kongs. Yes. Um, so the toys for the dogs, so that provides enrichment for them. And we even have stuff where, like, um, we can spray scents that the dogs like um, for the kids. They can blow, blow bubbles for the dogs. Um, just kind of really all kinds of different things that can be done. Um, so there's volunteer opportunities for all ages and abilities and interests and everything. Do you get a lot of seniors come in to walk dogs? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do. I yeah. bet you would, yeah. That'd be yeah. that'd be a good thing mm -hmm. to do. Yeah, and we have dogs of all sizes. So, you know, if you're not comfortable walking a dog that might pull you <laughs> down the street, we have little ones that you can walk and so that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Do you have any events coming up or volunteer opportunities? We have several events coming up. Um we have a like I was just talking about, we have lots of volunteer opportunities. Um, and Do you then post we, those on Facebook and Instagram and stuff? Okay. Yeah, we post those on Facebook. We also have an event calendar on the website okay. that's got all of those listed out. Our hope is to partner uh, with some local homeless shelters uh, to provide pet supplies. It's it's pretty difficult for someone who um, is experiencing homelessness to come and get pet food from the Humane Society and then have to lug it somewhere. So we're, our hope is to develop some of those partnerships. We haven't done much of that yet, but that's a goal. Um, so the van would allow us to do that. Um, anything of that nature, um, those are kind of the two big things we'll use it for. Cool. Can you tell me a little bit more about fostering? Mm -hmm. So fostering, um, that program is really important. Um, we have three over 300 foster volunteers, um, and that's for animals who maybe are stressed out by the shelter environment. Um, maybe they've had a medical procedure and they need space to be able to heal. Um, maybe they need extra socialization until they're ready for adoption. Um, there's a number of reasons why an animal might go into foster. Um, so that's people who volunteer to open their homes to bring in um, cats, dogs, small mammals, um, primarily cats and dogs. I think we foster small mammals, but primarily cats and dogs. Um, in fact, my wife and I just fostered uh, two kittens. Mm. Um, and we're adopting one of them, and then the other one was just adopted out. Um, but we fostered See, them until they were that ready. would that would be my problem is I, I would foster and then it would be mine. It was really difficult <laughs> to give the one back. Um, we we you know live in a townhome and we're limited on space. We already have an adult cat that we adopted from Longmont Humane Society back in 2021. Yeah, um, and we just. We kept going back and forth. We're like, are we going to have three cats? <laughs> I don't know. It's a lot. So, yeah, I I totally understand. Yeah. Um, if you can't open your house for adoptions or, um, sorry, fostering, um, we also have what's called the um, Expeditions Program. Okay. Um, where you can come in and take a dog um, out for a hike um, just to go to the park. Um you can do a sleepover where you bring them and they can stay at your house for a night. Um, Any time that an animal can get out of the shelter for a little bit, because it's not a natural environment, you know, it's right. it's um, it's loud, it's crowded. Um, it's just not a place where you can be yourself, um, even as a dog or a cat. Um, it's just, it's different. Um, and so having just that time to be able to go and get a pup cup from Starbucks or um, walk around the park with someone for a couple of hours, um, that's a great opportunity. And it's a, just a great chance. You know, maybe maybe someone has kids and they're not sure how they'd feel about having a dog around the house. You can bring them over for a sleepover and let them stay for a few hours. Um, that's, that's a really exciting program. So that's a really good idea. Yeah. I'll have you guys in the show notes, mm -hmm. my QR code. I post everything that you guys post on social media, Instagram and Facebook, but how can people contact and find out more about the Humane Society? Um, so the best place to find out information that's the most up to date is our Facebook and Instagram accounts. Um, that's really where we post everything that's happening. Um, we do have an event calendar um, on the website that you can go to and um, then if you are interested in volunteering or doing a tour of the facility, I forgot to mention that we also do tours oh. um, for groups of 15. Um, 
So school groups or local businesses, we've done that for a number of places, um, can come by and tour the facility. Um, that's just go online and there's a form you can fill out for that. Um, but all of it's uh, on the website and you can um, you know, sign up to be a volunteer and look for when the next orientation days are. Um, that's all of our contact information's on there. Um, so that's, but uh, keeping up with what's going on, Facebook and Instagram is the best way to do it. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything else you would like to add or discuss that you have a couple minutes or? You know, I think that that really covered everything. I was going to mention the foster department, but you asked about that. Sorry. Which is great. No, that's great. <laughs> um, that's, that's really important. Um, and volunteering, uh, foster bake sale. Let's see. I think that's everything. Yeah. Um, we're, we're really excited. We have a lot going on. Um, and um, this, you know, the summer is exciting. Oh no, I, there is one thing I want to mention. Um, so this summer now it's a little unfortunate because it's full right now, ah. but we do have our kids and critters camp, which is half days, um, every week in June. And then the second week of July, um, eight 30 to 12 30, um, for kids ages seven to 12. Um, so we take time learning about, um, animals and caring for them, um, how to properly handle animals, um, different careers that are available within um, animal care fields, animal welfare fields. Um, in fact, in the past, and we're hoping to do this again, there's even been a chance to observe a surgery mm. in our um, well pet clinic. Um, so very, very exciting opportunities. Um, it is, like I said, full um, at the at the moment, but there is a wait list if anyone's interested. Um, it's just a really fun opportunity um, for kids that age to come hang out at the Humane Society Most for a couple camp. hours. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've, I've looked into that because... Mm -hmm. Chase, which is his birthday. Happy birthday, Chase. Happy birthday. This is his 12th Wonderful. birthday. Nice. Um, yeah, I've looked into that for, for him because he's really, he likes mm -hmm. the animals and yeah. stuff, though, too. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, do you get chickens? <laughs> we, we have gotten chickens. I actually asked our, so we have a night intake um, where people can put animals in if they're, you know, if it's outside of our hours um, and it's warm, it's got food, blankets, water, that kind of thing. And I asked our um, animal welfare supervisor one time what the weirdest animal that she's gotten from there. And they got um, a flock of ducks one oh, time wow. just hanging out in nice. there. And so we had to, we actually did have to foster those. We had to find someone who would take them home and, you know, had like a farm and stuff before we could figure out what we needed to do with them. But yeah. That's, that's interesting. That's, that's a fun. good question. What mm -hmm. is the most interesting animal you've that's had? It's always interesting to me. Right? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, I just wanted to say thank you, Cliff, mm -hmm. for coming on and um, discussing this. And mm -hmm. yeah, um, if you guys want to work with animals, you know, check them out because that's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And um, it's good. It's uplifting. It's positive for the community, for your spirits, for the dog spirits. It's never mm -hmm. a bad thing. Um they're, they're people too. Um, yeah. Thank you, Cliff, for, for coming on. And um, I appreciate me. your time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. It's, yeah, uh, it's great, great opportunity. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you to my guests, my listeners, and my supporters. Serving together, we can strengthen our community. Please like and subscribe. Do all those other things. You know you got to do them. Because that's the easiest way to, that you can serve right now. All right. Now go. Connect with others and be a blessing. What makes the work of the Humane Society different than other similar serving organizations? Mm -hmm. May have moved my paper. No, you're that good. Time. Okay. Um, oh, oh, it's not going to be perfect. If you want, I can redo it. That's no, fine. No, that's but fine. no, I'm not going to edit out every um and every no, no, no. We, we are humans here. No, it is anything but perfect. So like that. that is, I mean, that's how it should be. That's what makes it, you know, real because mm -hmm. it's really real. Yeah. So I'll start that over again. Yeah, but okay. that's fine. <laughs>